it's about Open Telecom Cloud. And um, we would like to introduce um, you and me. So let's go to the first slide. And uh, here you can see our great pictures. Um, my name is Thorsten. I'm located in Magdeburg in Germany. And I am product owner and product manager for big data and artificial intelligence on our telecom cloud. So let's say I'm end-to-end -end responsible for all these um, services which we have. I'm working for T-Systems for more than 20 years, yeah, more or less 20 years in several positions. And I'm responsible for this big data and artificial intelligence part since 2020. So together with me is Ferenc. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ferenc Kukuczka. I've been working in the big data and AI spot for one and a half year now as a AI architect and um, I've been AI since 2017. I worked on projects like um, intelligent search engines using uh, university studies, smart commerce systems using Raspberry Pis, um, uh, GANs, uh, which I will talk about uh, in more details um, in my presentation. Thanks, so let's start. Um, so everyone would like to listen to the artificial intelligence story here, right? So, but let's start with the basics, with computing power, because we are talking about artificial intelligence, yes? Everything starts with the computing power. That's why we would like to talk about the Open Telecom Cloud, which is the biggest European OpenStack cloud. And it, hopefully you know already OpenStack. So OpenStack is one of the three most active open source projects in the world. Yeah? And our uh, cloud is based on this OpenStack. So we have uh, two uh, regions, the one is in Germany, Magdeburg Beer, and the second one is here in Amsterdam. So, um, and it's already quite big, yeah? so you can see it, uh, this, uh, this number, so we have more than 4,000 terabyte RAM. You know, on your local PC you have 8, 16 gigabyte, yeah? but we have more than uh, 4,000 terabyte RAM already installed. That means it's a huge platform. And we have more than 100 million end users which are using um, all these applications and the solutions on our own telecom cloud. So as you can see, it's quite big um, and it's a public cloud, so public available. Everyone can access this outside via GUI, very simple. And in addition, we have an, a private stack, so an on-premise solution, so that means you can place um, this open telecom cloud, your own own uh, mini open telecom cloud in your own data center, and you can decide if you would like to connect this with a public cloud or not. So that means um, this is just a short summary about the open telecom cloud, and um, I will uh, introduce these services once again, and then we go when uh, then we will go to this artificial intelligence part. Yeah? So on the next side, you can uh, see all this AI portfolio. Let's say yeah. Everything starts with data. Yeah? You need data, and therefore you need to get this data into the platform. We have some kind um, of data processing services as PaaS services. For example, this data ingestion service, which is based on Kafka, HBase, and Redis. We have a data warehouse service, and as well a map reduce service. Um, as, so they can set up a Hadoop cluster, very simple. Um, we have a cloud search service with a managed elastic search and Kibana versions. We have uh, some uh, standard elastic cloud servers, so EAS layer, yeah, if you would like to set up a VM, um, it's possible, of course, yeah, with some GPUs behind, you can see it. We have NVIDIA uh, V100 yeah, for training workload and even NVIDIA T4 for influence workload available. So uh, we would like to release this A100, the newest, uh, uh, let's say, high-end GPU from NVIDIA uh, next year. And even if you are uh, interested to use some con container solutions, we have a cloud container engine with a managed Kubernetes um, on our platform as well. So in addition, we are offering some SN chips. These are NPUs. Yeah? Um, so we, that means you can use it as well. And on top, we have Model Arts. Model Arts is an artificial intelligence framework. And this is one of the most important uh, part which we are talking today. That's why uh, Ferry can introduce this a little bit more to you. Yes, so uh, Model Arts is a one-stop development framework for uh, AI developers. Let me tell you about a few important features of uh, Model Arts. So here you can see uh, this whole AI development lifecycle. 
uh, in modern arts. So uh, one step uh, means that this out of the box uh, whole, uh, whole uh, life cycle solution uh, provides uh, data pro processing, uh, model training, uh, model management, and uh, deployment as well. Uh, it also has visualized workflows, so you can um, use this GES or graph engine service uh, that um, helps you to uh, visualize and manage your whole uh, life cycle. So um, no matter uh, how you start, if you are have uh, your data preprocessed, you can start a training. But if you don't have your uh, data preprocessed, you have raw data. So first thing is get your data. Uh, after that, you have to preprocess to be in, uh, in a form that your machine or deep learning can be fed with. So then again, comes the training. Uh, as for the training, um, uh, mod it's a model art is very easy uh, because you can use this uh, automatic model parameter tuning which helps you uh, get your training uh, done very fast and uh, you can also use various built-in uh, frameworks. Uh, once you have your uh, training done, you can evaluate it on a um, couple of uh, metrics like uh, F1 score, confusion matrix that tell us how your uh, model performed. If you are uh, satisfied with the results, um, you can deploy it as a one um, um, online batch uh, edge services with just one click, but if you uh, want a higher accuracy, you can retrain your model. Okay, but today we would like to talk about the different user groups of developers. Yeah? So our title is about zero coding AI. Yeah? So, and this different user groups um, for zero coding AI is the case three. I just would like to uh, want to use a model without any coding experience. And so you can see on my screen, uh, we have some additional user groups. Yeah? Uh, we have some uh, case two, it's, I just want to build a model quickly. Yeah? So for there, therefore we have some different uh, features available like a built-in algorithm. And uh, if you are the case one, I love coding uh, developer, so that means really the expert. Yeah? For sure you can use some kind of Jupyter notebooks and especially some uh, more features and services which we have available. And uh, we will talk with you about all this, uh, the three groups today. Yeah, we will introduce these um, features which we have. And uh, of course, um, we will have, we have some videos, some uh, live example, uh, how to develop, uh, for example, with K3. I just would like one to use a model with zero coding. Yes, so you can choose from a wide range of different frameworks uh, in model arts. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, there is this AI engine, TensorFlow, under the frequently used tab. We have different versions of TensorFlow, different versions of PyTorch uh, as well, but we have uh, uh, MXNet, uh, PySpark, and we also have uh, Cafe and XGBoost, which is a highly uh, efficient and portable and flexible ML framework. Um, and uh, you can choose uh, any to your liking. Uh, you know, um, you have to make sure that you use your uh, whole training uh, with these AI engines uh, uh, due to the um, tra your training set. So to the quantity, quality, the size of the type, type of your training set. So uh, there is even a saying in the, the field of machine learning, uh, you already have uh, heard about that, that there is no free lunch. So, you know, there is not a universal solution. Uh, it is good in something. TensorFlow uh, is the fastest on um, ResNet uh, uh, V50. Um, for example, PyTorch is the uh, fastest on faster RCNN. Um, MXNet is the uh, fastest on uh, VGT16. So, it is good in something, but you have to make sure that you uh, use your uh, appropriate uh, AI engine as well. So, uh, as you can see, uh, you can set the code directory as uh, well, the boot file as well. So, it's very customizable. Uh, but you know, this also comes with uh, more complexity as well. Um, uh, custom image uh, with model art is also an option to train your model. Uh, this is the most uh, customizable one. Uh, by this one, you have the most freedom uh, from a coding perspective. So uh, you can set the code directory, the boot commands as well, uh, and many other uh, uh, settings are available for you. Um, you can have the preprocessing methods, the uh, pro uh, processing functions as well, and uh, you can put this code into the code directory. Um, and uh, you have a base image, and uh, based on that uh, base image, you can build your AI framework, and um, you can use that container for both the training and the inference as well. So after you create your custom container, you will install the necessary uh, 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 libraries, Python libraries, um, uh, different frameworks, uh, libraries, different programming languages, and um, 
um, you will import the customer um, uh, can import that to the container that will uh, train and serve the model. And we have also Jupyter notebooks. Um, I'm sure that uh, you might. Uh, have heard about this one and used it as well. So, uh, you know, it's um, similar to the Jupyter notebooks that you uh, use on your local PC. The only difference is that uh, Model Arts uh, provides a powerful solution. So, um, uh, it uses many uh, cloud GPUs and you can um, bind together the notebooks uh, with the OBS, which is the object storage where you can uh, store large data sets. And uh, with the Voxing framework, with just a couple of lines of code, you can bind these uh, two together uh, as well. And you can uh, have many types of kernels as well. So we have a um, TensorFlow kernel, a PyTorch kernel, so uh, you can choose uh, any to your liking. OK, this was the case one. I love coding. Yeah? But let's go to the case two. I just want to build a model quickly. Yeah? So for, uh, for this one, we have a built-in algorithm available, which are already pre-trained on open source data sets. And uh, Ferry, may you can introduce this a little bit more to us. Yes, so you can see different kinds of ResNets here. So uh, from the quite uh, uh, simple ones like ResNet V150, which is for uh, image classification to the quite complex ones, such as uh, faster RCNN or Redmond ResNet, which uh, are for uh, object detection. You know, we also got Yolo, which is uh, you only need once. That is uh, a uh, cool uh, tool where you can um, detect objects on live stream videos uh, that can rectangle objects like vehicles, cars, um, humans, pavements, buildings, and many more stuff. But um, uh, we can uh, also have this uh, Darknet tool. Uh, Darknet is a, a convolutional neural network, and it's a pre-trained one that was pre-trained to classify images into 1,000 categories, such as objects like uh, keyboards, pencils, to the animals like mice uh, and dogs. Okay, many thanks. Let's go to this case three, yeah? Zero coding AI. So here we have XML. XML is, stands for our auto-learning function on model arts. So you can use this auto-learning function very simply, yeah? You don't need any coding experience. You don't need any artificial intelligence experience. You just need a PC, internet browser, and some data. And then you can uh, choose it very simple for kind of image classification, object detection, or predictive analytics, which is already available. And um, we are, you can train your own algorithm with three steps. So first of all, as I mentioned, you need to have your data. You can upload this to the uh, object storage. So that means single point of contact or single point of source here is the storage. Um, as soon as you have labeled this data, and this is very simple via GUI, yeah, just choose it. And we have some kind of label function, team label function available. Uh, um, as soon as you have done this, you can train the model. And therefore, you just need to push the button train, because um, there is already the auto, uh, autom uh, automism behind, um, which helps you yeah, to don't uh, choose any numbers and don't uh, do uh, any modification, something like this one. So it's already available and behind. Yeah? You just need to push the button train. And as soon as this uh, model is trained, um, you can um, deploy it very simple on, on the Open Telecom Cloud. You just need to push another button, which uh, says deploy the influence workload. And that means you will get um, this, um, this API in, let's say, one, two minutes available on the systems. You don't need to take care of setting up a VM or something like this one. So you can train and uh, um, deploy your influence workload in 30 minutes. Yeah? It's really simple and ready to use and without any coding experience. So this is a case three. I just want to use a model. Let me summarize all the three cases, and then we can go to a demo. Uh, so Ferry has a, has a great video uh, with, with us. So case one, I love coding. We have spoken about this one, um, and the Jupyter notebooks, and even the customer image, uh, or the custom image, where you can use your own Docker image with your framework, yeah, and use it inside of Model Arts. We have uh, spoken about case two. Uh, I just want to build a model quickly, quickly about built-in algorithm, which are available. Uh, and of course, about the case three, uh, the XML, the auto-learning function, which is very, very simple. So for all the three user groups, our developer groups, which we have, yeah, um, we have a lot of features uh, in, on our framework, as you can see. 
um, and therefore, um, if you would like to uh, to use model arts for your AI development, um, it's possible for everyone. So, Ferry, maybe we can go to this uh, great introduction of this auto learning function. Uh, yes. So here you can see uh, the main page of uh, XML. Uh, so, as Thorsten mentioned, we can create an um, image classification, object detection, and predictive analytics project. But now we are going to create an image classification project. So, we are specifying the name of the whole uh, XML job. And uh, after that, we are specifying also the dataset path. So, I um, specified the dataset path that I created um, before. Uh, and now you can see this whole XML job page where uh, there is 100 flowers uh, with five distinct groups, so daisies, sunflowers, tulips, and so on. Uh, you can see there in the right side of the screen. So, we are going to train the model. We are specifying the uh, training validation ratio. It's 80-20% uh, and we are using GPUs for that. So, we are hitting the uh, OK button to start the training. It's initializing, um, it's training, and the model is uh, published as well. You can see that it's completed with an 82% uh, percent of accuracy. We can already uh, see it on the model management uh, and models. Um, the first one is our uh, model. For a data set this size, it usually takes five or 10 minutes uh, to train. Uh, you can see the evaluation metrics uh, at the right side of the uh, browser. And we are going to deploy it as a real-time service because you know it's okay that we have a trained model, but we have to use it. So how we can use it? We are specifying um, that um, an API address, and uh, with that API address, we can access our model. So uh, that service name will be okay, and we are hitting the create button. So uh, our service is now uh, being uh, created. As you can see, it's uh, deploying, uh, but um, um, while it's deploying, let's um, look for some sunflower images. You know, um, we should have an image that our model has never seen before. So uh, that will be uh, a good one from Google. So I downloading it, an image, and if everything goes well, then we uh, are going to the service deployment tab and uh, seeing our service um, uh, status. So it, now it's running, so we can open it. Uh, there uh, you can see its API address. Uh, so we can access it uh, via this uh, address, but we are now going to predict uh, its some power type uh, with the predict button. Uh, uploaded it. Uh, that just I uh, downloaded it from Google a couple of seconds ago, and I'm going to predict it. At the prediction tab, you can see that uh, it's going to scan the image, the sunflower image, and um, yes, the predict label is sunflower uh, with its uh, seven. Uh, yes, 70%. So it's uh, quite good uh, because you know uh, we have only 100 um, uh, flowers, and uh, in each flower type we have 20 uh, images. So that was our uh, XML example. Many thanks, uh, Ferry. So um, we would like to talk about uh, some uh, solution cases, and here I have um, one example with me. It's about the data preparation. So everyone knows, yeah, most of the time of the development is the data preparation. No one wants to hear this, but most of the time. Yeah? So normally we will say 80% of the time is data preparation. And that's why you need to have some uh, features which helps you uh, to, to, um, to do this preparation very simple, very fast. And uh, we have model arts uh, together with some features available. Yeah, and here we have some example for the autonomous driving, um, where these uh, guys used uh, model arts as, as a framework yeah, to do the data preparation. So um, they used this cloud object storage, uh, which is our um, object storage um, from Telecom Cloud as a single point of source for this whole, uh, whole data. And they have done a data filtering with this one. Yeah? Um, uh, sounds very simple. In some cases it is. But it's good to have a data filtering function available um, to sort all these files. Yeah? And even if you're doing the labeling function, it can take a lot of time yeah? if you have uh, maybe 1,000 or 100,000 pictures. Yeah? So therefore, you can use some um, automated uh, labeling function, which with pre-trained models and even uh, with, uh, with this data annotation, uh, you have the possibility uh, here to use uh, party annotations um, yeah, to help you all these labeling functions. Uh, and um, last but not least, we have some kind of version management available inside, so that's already included. And so if you are doing, uh, if you are some modifications of all these labelings, yeah, so uh, Model Arts helps you with this version lifecycle management. So, and that's very simple, yeah, then you can choose all the things for the model training. And as I mentioned, most of the time it uh, will be used for this 
uh, data preparation. So that means you have to have to take care that the data is uh, that, that you have the data with the right quality. Uh, again, so uh, now we are going to provide some um, examples what we uh, created with the model arts. So I first heard about uh, GANs two years ago. Um, however, these uh, machine learning framework classes go back to 2014 when Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues invented this uh, approach of uh, generative modeling using deep learning methods. So this uh, generative adversarial network is a algorithmic uh, architecture that use, uh, uses two uh, neural networks, um, a discriminator and a generator. And the basic idea behind them is that the generator and the discriminator uh, contest with each other in a game and they uh, learn in tandem. Um, nowadays, games are widely used in the entertainment industry, uh, you know, to um, color up uh, black and white videos, to um, uh, scale up old uh, video games uh, and uh, to put uh, new faces uh, in uh, uh, the movies. And now I'm going to show you uh, how it works in model arts. So uh, this will be a presentation video um, where you can see um, uh, this um, child painting at the um, left side of our browser. So as you can see, uh, it's a Microsoft Paint, like a six-year-old uh, could have uh, done a way better one. It's just containing uh, six or seven colors. But the main thing is that um, um, you can see it's, um, photo it's getting a photorealistic image at the right side of our browser. So from that child painting, uh, we got this um, Berlin cityscape. So this belongs to the Berlin dataset. We have several ones, and you can see the, uh, that uh, blue blob uh, represents the uh, grass uh, at the right side of our picture. So we are expand expanding, uh, broadening a little bit, uh, because we have much concrete uh, and uh, not so uh, much grass, and this grass expanded. We are going to uh, do the same uh, in the right side to be symmetrical. So as you can see, in a couple of seconds, uh, we got the uh, we, have, we will have the grass in the right side of our uh, pavement as well. Uh, but now we are creating a little bit um, uh, different because we are expanding the sky as well, which represents this uh, red uh, color, as you can see. We are expanding it. So uh, hopefully um, the skyscrapers uh, will have a feeling of it. Yeah, uh, hopefully no one uh, was working up there anymore. So as you can see, we removed the top three or four floors of the skyscraper. So that's uh, it for Berlin. We have other pictures of Berlin as well. This is also a... Uh, street uh, photo of Berlin and um, uh, at the left side you can see that we have many uh, other. We have currently four data sets. This is uh, Berlin's. We have Wadirun, uh, which is southern, in southern Jordan. You can see the segmentation image, uh, this chai painting there in the left side. So uh, from that we created this photorealistic image. So uh, you know in Berlin uh, we created something, removed something. Hopefully no one will be angry at us if we are creating something in here as well. So we are creating a rock and uh, that appeared uh, on the photorealistic image. But if we created something, let's delete something as well. So that has been deleted. Um, that's it for body room. You know, not so exciting. Just a couple of uh, rocks in the desert. Uh, we also got Ireland. Um, so I think that uh, we should go back to Europe. Uh, we have a twin mountain in there. And, um, you know, we have a twin, so let's make them a triplet by painting a third mountain uh, in between them uh, with this uh, brownish color, as you can see. Uh, and in a few seconds, uh, okay, we got the triplet. So uh, as you can see, uh, a mountain uh, has been created in between them. But if we created something again, like body room, we also should remove something. So let's uh, delete this first uh, big hill. Um, a little bit of smoothing, and yeah, it vanished. So uh, basically, uh, we created this uh, with guns. Uh, let me show you my favorite uh, data set. Um, it's different because, you know, um, the other um, were taken from videos uh, made by other people. Uh, and this one, this is a Hungarian town where I came from. Uh, this was uh, uh, taken by uh, me and my colleagues. So we went out, took a little a uh, couple of uh, images, photo, photos and videos, and uh, we got uh, the river broadened as well, as you can see, the river Tisza broadened, um, uh, and again, a, a little bit as well. And we also have a uh, demo about the full AI pipeline. So uh, remember this uh, XML demo that I uh, was talking about a couple of minutes ago. So uh, I created an XML um, 
based uh, script uh, where I only use OpenStack commands uh, with the past definitions uh, in it, and everything uh, will happen the same way uh, as I showed you, but uh, now with the um, using of OpenStack commands from the command line, so everything will be automatic. That is the main uh, thing uh, of the next, next video. So as you can see here, I have this script that I will uh, start, uh, so it's uh, running, and in a couple of seconds we already got the whole uh, data set created, the train job created, the model is being created. Uh, now let's check it on, on the uh, GUI as well. So now we're refreshing the data set page. There, are, there is this uh, data set that we created from the GUI. Automatically we have all the hundred labeled flowers that we saw before, so we have everything. Uh, let's go back to the uh, console. Uh, to see that, okay, uh, our script has finished running, we got a service deployed as well, uh, so uh, we have the model as well, it's now deploying, it's running, so we do did everything the same way, uh, we can predict as well, as you can see, we got the sunflower and we got another flower as well, a daisy, um, hopefully, yes, that's been predicted precisely, as you can see, with more accuracy than before. Uh, let's upload the daisy as well, and get it predicted. Cool. So that is with OpenStack. Great, many thanks Ferry. So I guess there was something for uh, I love coding groups and something for uh, zero coding groups. You can see via, via GUI you can, you can do a lot of things, but uh, with coding experience you can do one, uh, most of these things, let's say this one. Okay, so um, we would like to talk about zero coding AI. Let's say this is done for today. Yeah? Uh, in addition, we need to talk about security and data privacy because this is very important um, as well. Um, you know, data is, is like gold. Yeah? You have to be secure your data because the data is the source of, of all these uh, artificial intelligence stuff. Therefore, you have to secure not only the data, you have to secure um, this personal data of the customer. And this is based on GDPR, GDPR compliant. You know, and um, the general data protection scheme, yeah? uh, general data protection regulation (GDPR) for you, uh, for the European uh, people. So therefore, it's very simple uh, uh, to secure it. Um, you can just do an end-to-end -end encryption on any cloud. Then you have, um, uh, then you have, may maybe uh, you have already um, the GDPR compliance. Um, but if you are not able to do an end-to-end -end, uh, encryption, and in most of the cases you are not able to do so, yeah? you have to take care uh, to use an, a European provider and with the data, uh, where the data is located in Europe, that's the first one, physically located, and the second one it should be operated by a European com company. So why? Um, it's very simple. So um, you know this uh, judgment Schwemms II from uh, the Euro European Court of Justice in 2020. They said the privacy shield uh, between Europe and US is invalid, full stop. So that means it's not allowed to hand over any personal customer data uh, to the uh, US government. And um, in addition, we know the Cloud Act, for example. Yeah? The Cloud Act means the US government can get access to data from US companies. So even if the US company is storing data in Germany, in Europe, yeah, the US government can get access. And that's why you need to ensure an end-to-end -end encryption yeah, to be GDPR compliant, or you, you are using a European cloud um, with a European provider. Yeah, so even this is possible, and therefore please take, uh, please take in consideration. Um, if you are doing some AI development, you have to take care of the data as well. So that's about this one, and last but not least, we would like to talk about the trustworthy AI. Um, it's, um, we have an AIC4 criteria catalog in Germany. It's from the Federal Office for Information Security. Yeah, I need to write this, I know the German words, but not the English one. Um, it's a cloud compliance criteria catalog with minimum requirements for a secure use of machine learning methods uh, on cloud computing. And there you have um, eight areas um, where this whole algorithm is, let's say, checked on this cloud. 
So it starts with the first one. Um, it's maybe uh, based on this cloud uh, compliance criteria catalog C pipe. Yeah, C pipe is the standard uh, criteria catalog which which is necessary with some basic checks uh, for cloud computing. But even if you go, for example, to reliability, uh, you have to sure in continuous operation. Yeah. Um, and as well as some basics like uh, set up the logging, uh, set, set up some backups. No one wants to talk about backups, but backups are important. That's why it's always good to really to, um, to check if, if this is in place. Um, even if you go to data quality, yeah? so if you are doing the training of the algorithm, you need data, as I mentioned. Yeah? And so therefore, um, it's, it's, uh, um, this data quality means this is a trustworthy source for, uh, for your data. And um, so point seven, for example, is explainability. That means you have to uh, set up measures um, for this um, users and customer yeah, to explain the, de the decision uh, of the AI, for example. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's the basic criteria catalog, which, uh, which is already available as published um, in beginning of this year and I'm happy to say that we already have some uh, one um, solution on our telecom cloud which has this um, AI or which is according to this AI C4 catalog so and we can go to this next slide there is uh, some uh, chatbot solution from uh, the from Cognigy which is running on the open telecom cloud yeah so and uh, we have this um, we have this hosted yeah and uh, we have this kind of C5 criteria catalog as well on our systems. So that's, that's about the trustworthy AI. So um, you can have a look on, in the internet to, to get some more information about it, but for sure you can talk to us, you can ask your questions. Yeah? Feel free to ask your questions to Ferry and me. And uh, many thanks for the session today. So, are there some questions? Yes, please. We do also have uh, for the for the general uh, the general network a solution which can turn daylight images into thermal images. Yes, that's a question to uh, parents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, last time we were experiencing a lot of stuff with these scans, and uh, uh, now we have also a type of GAN where we are using this. Uh, climb uh, catastrophe uh, thing where we can show that what happens if we uh, did nothing to the uh, whole uh, earth so uh, basically that can be done as well as you said but uh, uh, sorry sorry so that can be done as well but but, but you know uh, we did this first thing so this daylight and uh, as well i saw that others uh, were doing that uh, but we wanted to, to do something uh, new you know okay. yeah it's just um, um, let's say a demo case what what we have um, so therefore we have this kind of examples, but it's good to have this additional ones as well. Yeah. So we have this demo case for some summits like here, yeah, to show something what is possible on the cloud, um, and therefore uh, it's a nice showcase. Let's say this one. Yeah. Was there any additional question? Yes, yes. please. Yep. What's your convincing argument to go to for your platform compared to other, let's say, cloud platforms? Very good questions. Yeah, I, I like this kind of question. So, what are the, uh, our unique selling points? Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned, we are an open stack cloud. Open stack means open source. Yeah. So we are the open telecom cloud. Yeah. And so that means you can trust it because there's open source behind. So that's the first one. Second one is, we are GDPR compliant. Yeah. Because we are a European company, company, and the data is located and physically physically uh, located in Germany and in Europe in Amsterdam and it's operated by us so only by European people so therefore uh, GDP, GDPR compliance is already available so in addition uh, you can trust Magenta <laughs> yeah. and um, what else do we have we have a hybrid solution hybrid means yeah we have a private on or we have an on-premise uh, uh, telecom cloud solution which you can uh, put in your data center and say, okay, I have my own private cloud, yeah, and you have uh, you can set up this, all these features, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's these path services, GPUs, uh, even model arts. Let's say everything is possible, and uh, you can cut the connection to the public cloud. That means it's really a private cloud which is 
in your data center, and uh, this is really for uh, high secure operations, let's say this one. So, um, you mean the e e I, uh, AI C4? Yeah, so maybe we can go back to the slide once. Let's solve the, uh, the trust with so one, one behind. So, not this one? Yes. So, you know, this e I, uh, AI C4 um, is a criteria, uh, criteria catalog, and this needs to be checked by, um, you know, the, like, the, like the typical um, uh, agencies. Um, and here you have different areas. Yeah? You can see it um, based on these areas, you have to check the algorithm, the data behind, but even the cloud platform, yeah? because this uh, quad, uh, uh, criteria catalog is for um, secure uh, cloud operations and um, as well uh, for this machine learning methods. So that's really, it's an end-to-end -end check of this whole um, application, AI application. Yeah? And therefore, you need minimum the C5 um, uh, criteria catalog. And in addition, yeah, you have to check all this data, which is uh, the data sources and um, the data operations, the daily operations. So um, that's really great to have this end-to-end -end check and not only the cloud, which is behind not only backups. So really, you can check everything yeah, based on this cloud, uh, cloud criteria catalog. And, and the question was, okay, that's the criteria catalog. No, it's done by audit companies, by audit companies, yeah. So, you know, it will cost a lot of money, like always, yeah, because there need to, uh, there need to be a lot of uh, checks behind, yeah, which, which need to be done. Um, but yes, it's, it's done by the audit companies, yeah. Then you can say it's the cloud criteria uh, um, catalog. You can't say it's according to this, but you don't get any certificate or something like this one. It's only according to the cloud criteria catalog, and you know, like it works, yeah, you're changing the system all the time. Yeah? So that means you have to do this, uh, uh, this review and this, let's say, to review about, about uh, according to this catalog, let's say every year yeah? or every two years, it really depends, yeah? uh, but it's, it's, it's on a regular basis. Yes? Is there any plans to upstream this into the OpenStack community as a project, or is it a closed source project? Uh, this model arts is not an OpenStack project. Um, so let's say our EAS layer is an um, OpenStack project, and therefore we are working together with this uh, OpenStack um, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, this model arts are using open source uh, frameworks, yeah? but let's say this is not based on OpenStack. Yes, and uh, as you could see from this uh, short demo, uh, model arts can be used in this DevOps way as well. So with this open, open stack commands, with this you know full uh, whole AI uh, pipeline, CI/CD pipeline as well. Any further questions? Oh yes. Um, why did you go for, for instance, nine for uh, the zero coding at the end? Sorry, it was. Why, why didn't you go <laughs> for? Why didn't you go, for instance, for Nine as a tool that you can use for the zero coding, but develop your own environment? Uh, it's a very good question. So, you know, we have a lot of tools, and uh, this is not the only one which we have on the Open Telecom Cloud. Yeah? Let's say this is included with all our services because it should be very simple for everyone. That's why we have this tool uh, which is connected to our object services, service, to our internal services and which is, can be used very simple. But even we have uh, other solutions um, like Kubeflow, for example, yeah, which is managed available on Open Telecom Cloud, and this manages means uh, T-Systems is responsible uh, to do this, and we will offer this yeah, on Open Telecom Cloud and GDPR compliant. Do you maybe have a built-in mechanism to actually monitor all the different models that are being deployed on this uh, open source stack of yours? Because I can imagine that at a certain point you will have many, many models and you want to like, govern it a little bit. 
Yes, so we have a version lifecycle man or version uh, management inside of Model Arts. So that means you can deploy 100 uh, um, influence workloads, 100 models, yeah, and you can you have this overview inside. So which version is available, which is running, which resources are used. Yeah, even you can use dedicated resources. So everything can be can be done uh, with Model Arts. Yeah. Many thanks for those questions, by the way. Yeah. So if you have some further questions, we are happy to answer this. One, two, three. Okay. Many thanks. Enjoy the day. Yeah. If you would like to have some back here or some more information about Open Telecom Cloud, uh, we are here. We can answer those questions, but even we can talk about additional things. I don't want to forget one one important thing. Thanks for rem remind me. So uh, we are offering this as a beta phase currently, so that means you can uh, choose uh, this directly on the Open Telecom Cloud free of charge at the moment, so that means you can use your own training, you can start uh, this from today on, and you don't need to pay for this one right now, uh, but of course it's li with limited resources, just one training job, one influence job per customer, yeah. So, but really use it, try it out, and uh, yeah, get in contact with us. Yeah. Uh, by the way, our booth is uh, the booth three on the left side if you go into this, uh, in this whole uh, area. So, many thanks. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the summit. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.